Okay, can you guys see that? That's, that's, we got a small monitor here. I don't know if we can zoom. Can we push that back or whatever? Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, it's small. We usually meet in another room. Uh, anyway, I'm Cornelius Shop and I'm an I'm a, one of three accessibility specialists uh, at the uh, HHSC. It used to be DAWs, but we made a transition to the HHSC uh, agency. Uh, I've been doing that for almost five years now. And we used to teach monthly on accessibility. We don't do that anymore. Uh, what we typically do is um, show people how to make their document accessible. Instead of doing it for them, which we used to do, but there was only five of us and there were 65,000 people that we were trying to serve and that was kind of hard for us to do. Uh, and we were trying to teach people to do it, but even then we had a limited number of uh, classes that we could teach and limited number of seats that we could uh, accommodate people every month. So uh, the trend is, was, is to show people how to do it and also create training material. That's something that we're doing right now. We're creating more and more online training material on various topics from what I'm doing here, uh, uh, Word, Excel, you name it, Outlook. Uh, anyway, what we're going to be talking about today is PDF forms. Now, to be confused with PDF documents, which is a total, we did that several months ago, I believe, right? Document is relatively easy to do uh, as far as making it accessible where we get the right structure, right? The headings, the images, with all text, uh, the tables, uh, the links, you know, color contrast, and uh, the list, the bullet list, right? You do all of those, you structure those correctly, you can make a PDF document accessible. Uh, and if it's a Word document, you can easily convert that to PDF if it's done right. Uh, we'll talk about that, one of my chauvinism that I use quite often. Uh, but what we're going to be doing today is PDF forms, which is a different beast, if you will. Uh, because it's more like a HTML page, right, uh, HTML form page to be exact, uh, which have form labels and form elements on them. And so what, what you typically do uh, when you wanting to create a PDF uh, form is start off with a source document. And source document is typically a Word document. Everything typically start off with Word and then it's converted to a PDF document. Uh, so what we have here is a Word document that looks like a form. You can fill it out. Now, and by the way, you can make a Word document accessible, but it takes a little bit more effort, right? And you got to, and we, we do that, but not that often. Uh, you can make a Word document accessible, a Word form rather, accessible, but it's just a little bit harder to do, at least in my opinion. Uh, doing it uh, this way is easier, but time consuming, mind you. You know, it's not hard, it's just time consuming, depending upon the length of the document, too. Uh, this one page document, if I didn't have to talk about it, I could do it in a half an hour. Uh, but if you, when you're dealing with a 100, 200 page document, well, typically you won't have that in the form, but a five page document with a lot of form fields, then it can really take quite a bit of time to do. But there's some shortcuts, and we'll, we'll show you some of that uh, this, uh, today. I was about to say this morning, but it's after. It's a afternoon, uh, but we're going to show you some shortcuts to to remediate some problems that you you can have if you don't do it right in a Word document. So what we have is a Microsoft Word document, a form, if you will. Uh, basically, it's a table. Okay, and you guys familiar with tables with rows and columns? It's literally a table that has been structured to look like a form, right? Uh, you merge the cells, the rows, <clears throat> if you will, to create the structure that you need. Okay, and so that's what this is. And then you lock it down. Okay, uh, and we'll show you that in a bit. But basically, you want to start off with a Word document and then convert it to a PDF. And so what I want to talk about first is two, what not to do. And there are two things that you shouldn't do when converting from a Word to a Word form to a PDF form. First thing you don't want to do is create it automatically to a PDF form uh, using the default option of going to the Acrobat tab. Now, typically when you install Acrobat, it shows up as a tab on the top of the HTML, I mean on top of the Word document. And then you create PDF. You don't want to do that. 
Okay, and I'll tell you the reason in a minute. Okay, but let me just do it just again, just to show you by mistake what not to do, so you can remember not to do it. Uh, so if I click the create PDF, I'm, I'm actually in Word right now, and I'm 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 converting it to a PDF file. Okay, so let me let me cancel do it again. So Click on the Acrobat tab. Yeah, we can't see that. Oh, you can't see that? You can't. Actually, it's on the bottom of the screen. Oh, I see. Wow. Why is it doing that? That's weird. That should be up at the top yeah. that you got. <laughs> Go figure that out. I've never seen that one. That's a new one on me. Anyway, this is the top of the page right there, you guys. <laughs> Go figure that one out. I don't know why it's doing that. Weird. Uh, but I've seen worse. At least we see it. So, so you're in Microsoft Word, and is this a tab for a document or for a program? Uh, this oh, is a I'm sorry, I got it. This is the file with your name. Yeah, this is a, this is typically, this is a, and you see right here, this is a work now. Right. This is kind of funny because I'm, I'm <laughs> at the top and showing down to the bottom. This is really weird. This is just a normal Word document, which is a table that looks like a form, right? When you install Acrobat, it creates a tab inside of Microsoft Word, right? Because this is in essence a plugin, an extension, or what have you. So if you click the Acrobat tab. What the version of Microsoft is this? I think this is this is the latest version of Microsoft, but this will work with any any version. But sometimes other version won't create a tab for you. Yeah, but we're not going to be using this anyway. I'm going to show you another way we're going to be doing this in a minute. Okay, so we got this, we got this little tab here, and then we'll click on the Create PDF document, tab rather. And what it's going to do is save the document with the same name in the same folder, but with the .pdf extension on it. So when I click Save, give it a minute. And you can see it saved it as a PDF file with the same name as the Word document. It looks exactly the same. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see that there's basically no difference between a Word document and this document. In essence, what we have is a picture of the document. We're going to overlay form elements on top of it. But first thing you don't want to do, again, two things not to do, is you typically, now you don't, you can just delete the tags, but typically what you want, don't want to do is have the document tagged. Okay, the form document, you do not want tags on it. Okay, we're going we're gonna to add the tags later, but typically you don't want tags initially onto the document. So when you just do Acrobat and then click on the Create PDF, it automatically creates tags, not what we want to do. Okay, that's the first thing you don't want to do. So let's let's look at another thing here that 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 can become a problem for you. So was that when you when you did that? Did you press a uh, create button on the or did you? Yeah, cr I, did I you press save at. Uh, no, I clicked the create PDF and then it created this document. On my Microsoft Word for Mac, I just clicked on on create PDF and I'm getting an interesting message that says. Acrobat creates PDF. You can create high quality, rich, and accessible PDF using Adobe Creative PDF Cloud Service. Click yes to create a rich PDF using the service, or no to continue without the service. Yeah, I think the cloud service is something different. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, there is a cloud uh, version of uh, PDF, but I've never used the cloud stuff. It's, yeah. it, it's telling that it's accessible. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure about the, the cloud version. I've never used. Typically, I use a local copy after I save it, save it. So it might differ a little bit on a Mac. Well, that's funny. I said yes to it, and I'm getting a Microsoft Visual Basic error, runtime error number five. Yeah. Now, it's either call or argue. It's typical Microsoft. Yeah. 
So I'm not sure about that. But typically, you, you don't want to convert it like this because you're going to get a tag document. When I mean tag, you see the tags on the tag tree over there. You don't want that. Uh, not for a form <coughs> document. Now, now a word, uh, regular document, yes. Okay, it's okay to do that. But with a form, you want it to be untagged. So I'm going to show you how to do how to make it untagged in a minute. But before I do that, I want to introduce another thing that you uh, you can do to help uh, speed up the process, if you will. So what I have here is uh, a picture, as it were, of that Word document uh, in a PDF format. So I'm going to overlay some form elements on top of it. <clears throat> the way you do that is you, you click on the Prepare Form uh, link. Now, if you don't have this link, you can go to the Tools. Now, by the way, I'm using um, Adobe Acrobat DC, which is the latest and greatest version, so you may not have this uh, option. You click on tools and you have a whole host of things that you can add to the menu over to the left. And so if you don't have it, you can just click on it or drag and drop it and it's going to add it to this list right here. Uh, well, when you click on it, you have two options. You either use the current document that I've just loaded in from Word or you can scan a document. I've never scanned a document. Typically, I use an existing document to, to work with. So I got, I got a form document uh, loaded. So I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to click the Start button to initiate the process. What it's going to do is it's going to examine that document through some algorithm uh, and try to determine what are form fields, what are radio buttons and check boxes and all that fun stuff, right? Just like in HTML. Uh, now, it's not going to do a great job, in that, uh, but so you got to fix it. And we'll talk about that in a bit as well. So I'm going to click the Start button. Uh, bam. Uh, it created those, those form fields, if you will, uh, kind of input fields like in HTML, adjacent to the form labels. Now, what it did, it looked at this text and said, oh, that must be a text field, so I'm going to create a text field for it, right? Now, notice it came down here. It, it assumed that this was a checkbox, and it, it shouldn't be a checkbox. It should be a radio button, and we'll talk about that in a bit, too. Uh, and it said, let me let me put a checkbox there. So it looks at the, the document and try to make an assessment, if you will, of what should be a form element or what type of form element I should overlay on top of this image because basically I'm, I'm just looking at an image right now. <clears throat> and it's overlaying those elements on top of them. Well, let's, let's examine a few of these and then we're going to do it the right way. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is click on this one and you can see that it says text text field properties, right? Uh, that came in right, came in as a text field, not exactly as I would like it to, but it came in as a, the right element, if you will. Now, do you have a felony conviction? Yes or no? Should that be a radio button, a radio group, or a checkbox? Radio, right, should be one or the other, right? Or what we call mutually exclusive, for you geeks out there. Uh, well, if I click on it, it says it's a checkbox, so it didn't come in correct. I want to show you how to fix that in a Word document, remediate it, or mitigate it rather than a Word document, uh, so it comes in correct in the PDF document. Pull it down a little bit. Okay. You see it? Okay, so, uh, and yeah, if you guys don't see anything, let me know because I'm seeing a totally different thing than what you guys are seeing. What was that? Is there a way of setting the default? Yeah. Um, what right here? Yes. I understand you can change what the radio button is saying, but if you two buttons, how do you change? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can change, yeah, and we're going to do that. Yeah, you can. Uh, I don't know if you can set the default to yes or no all the time, but you can, we will be changing it to the, to the right option that you need to choose. So we'll see that in a bit as well. But the thing is, this didn't come in right. This came in as a series of checkboxes, when in essence it should have been radio buttons, or radio group, if you will. So click on that and cancel out of that. Uh, now scroll down, I can see that gender, male or female, should come in as, now these days you don't know, right? Because <laughs> you, you can check anything these days. But typically it should be male or female, right? Well, this came in as a checkbox, and this should be a radio button, typically. Emphasis on the word typical. 
Okay, so it doesn't, it will not do a perfect job of getting the right elements. So that's the first thing I want to know, let you know. So the problem I have is this though. My, my text field, even though they came in correctly, they didn't come in the way I wanted them to come in. Let me explain what I'm saying. This form element, I would prefer, now even though it would work, but I'm limited to um, I'm limited to the amount of space I can type because it's it's a it's on the side of the text field and not under the the, the form label I should say you see what I'm saying here it's it's on the side of it and not let me move it and, the, and I'm gonna resize it and then I'm gonna resize it this way so this is the way I would prefer to come in right because I can type more into that area. It'll work the other way, but I'm limited to the amount of characters I can type in there, and it's not going to look as good. Typically, you want the <clears throat> the input field, and I say input field because I'm kind of relating this to a HTML document. You guys can relate to that. Uh, the input field should be underneath the label, the form label. Now, <clears throat> I would have to do that to each one of these, and again, I would go. Select this one, push it down, slide it over. Click on this one, push it down, grab it, slide it over, right? And that's a pain, okay? Because I have a little show fan there, and some of you guys know one by one, not much fun, <laughs> okay? Uh, so, what we're going to do is show you a way to alleviate some of these problems by mitigating the problem in Word so that it comes in clean or cleaner in a PDF file. So yeah, I could do that, but it's a pain to do that. And then I need to make sure it's the right size or the height. Otherwise, you know, you have things bouncing all over the place and it wouldn't look too pretty. So two things you don't want to do. One, you don't want to tag your document. Okay, that's number one. And two, you want to mitigate your document in Word so it can come in cleaner. Now, I have a little show mechanism for that. Comprehensive mitigation prevents excessive remediation, right? I mean, if you fix the problem here, you prevent problems there. And okay. you will see that in a minute, okay? Uh, so, two things you don't want to do. So, I spent quite a bit of time on something that you don't want to do. Let's not uh, save this document. Let's do it right the first time, right? So I'm going to click out of this and not save it. Close all tabs. Let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna close all tabs. No. I'm back to my Word document. And again, it's kind of the bottom there, the heading of it. So I'm going to do a few things to this document to make it come in cleaner. Now, in order to do that, right now, I can't edit this document. Uh, and I can type in a text. These, by the way, are text fields in, the, in a Word document. But I can't edit the document because it's locked. OK, it's protected. So I need to unprotect the document. And so I'm going to go up to the Review tab. Again, down at the bottom here, it's up on top of my page. Uh, I'm going to click on the Review tab. And I'm going to do Restrict Editing. Click on the Restrict Editing. And then Stop Protection. You guys see that? So that's going to unlock that Word document. Okay, so I can edit it. Uh, where does it do that? Oh, can you guys not see it? Uh, it says uh, we're trying to follow. Okay, all right, let me do that again. Uh, so click on the review, then restrict document. Where do you see restrict document? Uh, is it not is it show it? Look, it's, it's right here. It's right here. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, again, because my monitor, <laughs> that's weird. Okay, let me see if I can, can I push this down? Oh, look at that. What is that? Why is it? Okay, you see it up at the top? Let me show it to you. Right here, and then see, see right there? That that projector is literally splitting, the, almost repeating my screen yeah, two times for some reason. Well, when I do that, it. No, I'm sorry. I meant make the whole window. Because 
Sorry, I think I'll try to maximize. Could it be above the threshold? Yeah, this might. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, weird. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, it is. Uh, so disregard, disregard this down there <laughs> right now. Uh, we're seeing about half the screen. <laughs> Can you even do a full screen binding F11? Uh, no. Okay, so anyway, we'll just settle for this for right now. Okay, so what I did was I went to the review tab, clicked on the, you guys see it now? Restrict yes. editing? Yes. Okay, you click on that, it pulls up this panel, and then, it, then it says, yes, start enforcing what I unprotected, and now I'm protected, right? Well, let me just turn it back on and show you the way I unprotected it. Okay, so let's do it again. So I'm going to click on the review tab. Now you can't edit it because it's protected. Right, well, I got, it, I got unprotected now because now I'm going to click on this. And then down, can you see down at the bottom there, stop? Well, actually, I was there. you're right, that was the other way. So I need to do it again. Okay, so now I could go in and edit these things that I want to. So let's do this. First thing I want to do is get rid of, oh, stop protection, yeah. I'm going back and forward, am I? Okay. So, what I want to do is go in and edit things that I don't want in my document, and I'm going to show you, tell you the reason why. So, I deleted that statement, uh, you guys saw right there, enter extra select, I'm selecting that, I'm going to hit the delete key, I'm going to select it, and then we hit the return key or the enter key to add a space below, and it's important to add a space below, and I'm going to tell you the reason why in a minute. Okay, and then I'm going to look for another, uh, there's several instances of this phrase in parentheses. I'm going to select that one, hit delete. And there's another one, where is it? Right here. Yeah, and there's one here too, but I'm, uh, I'm going to change that one to something else. But I'm going to delete this one. Okay, now this one I'm going to actually change to say, select all that apply. Okay, so I'm gonna keep that one. But the other ones I deleted. You know, I, you'll see in the reason in a minute the reason why. Now let me go in and do do something else. I'm gonna delete this parentheses and then this text field and this other parentheses out of each of the phone fields. There's a daytime, a cell, and a video phone field. You guys see that? Uh, I'm gonna delete those. Uh, like so. Because what I'm doing is I'm simplifying my document so this rendering engine can can render the, this thing correctly. You see a reason why. Uh, again, this is mitigation, right? Uh, so we want to have excessive remediation to do in our Word document, in our in our PDF document, rather. So so I cleaned it up a little bit. Now let me do one other thing, if you will. Uh, notice there's a yes no, and if you recall, that came in as a checkbox. Remember, where well, it should have been a what? Radio button, a radio group. Well, the reason for that is because it saw those lines between yes and no, and it, it got confused, right? So what I want to do is help it out, help it along, as it were, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to swipe across these three cells, and I'm going to do merge cells, right? Right-click and do merge cells. And then I'm going to bring up those two radio buttons, or check boxes, I guess. Back up. By the way, we use check boxes even though they're radio button. They, 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 because radio buttons are circular typically, right? Mm -hmm. But we use everything square, and that's just our, that's just our preference uh, that we use at our agency. And so I just brought the yes and a no with the with the radio with the check box next to it, and kind of spaced it out a little bit. The key though is I got rid of the lines. Like, think about what I just did. I got rid of the lines between that yes and a no and that question because that was confusing the rendering engine because what the rendering engine does it literally scans a document line by line and says oh this should be a, a, a field this should be a checkbox 
And it does some other things as well, as you'll see. Now, now that I've done a couple few things just to clean up my document, I'm going to save it again and then do the same thing I did before, but we're going to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to start the uh, protection again, like that, and then I'm not worrying about a password. Uh, so I'll protect the document, and I can save it as well. Now what I want to do is not use that Acrobat tab. Remember, I'm going to tell you, don't use the Acrobat tab up here, remember? Because that's going to create a tag document. You don't want to do that typically. Now, if you have to, sometimes it doesn't work. I've been in classes where the stupid thing, one of those moments, don't work, where it just, it just came in a PDF and then I deleted the tags out of PDF. But what you want to do is this, to, to, to create an untagged document. You want to go up to a file, and this may not be as intuitive as you think, because you wouldn't think you're printing the document in this case. But I'm going to do a file print. And normally you print to a physical printer, right? But in this case, we're going to print to what we call an Adobe PDF printer. This is a software print driver, if you will. And that's what we're going to be printing to. So I'm going to select that option. It's already selected. When I hit print, it's going to try to print that document to locally, if you will. That's what it's doing in essence. Uh, so I'm going to hit, hit save. And it's going to tell me that, you know, this document has been created. So I'm going to click on the look. Adobe icon button down at the bottom there to open it up. I'm going to cancel out of this for right now. It's reading untagged because it's saying it's untagged, right? So now if you look at the document, tag tree, no tag available. Okay, so that's the reason why you want to do the print PDF. It will create an untagged document for your form. Now, now don't do this with a regular document. Uh, you only want to do this with a form document. Let me say that, emphasize that again. You don't want to do this with, with a regular document, only a form document, a word form to a PDF form document. But you want to come in unclean, untagged rather. Uh, now. What did you find the document tree? Uh, right here. The tag tree, you think? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you can't see it? Okay. All right. Can you see it right here? Oh, on the left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and you click on it, and if it's not there, you right-click and select it from the list. Okay, uh, so you click on the tag, look like a little tag, <laughs> uh, and you see there's no tags available, and rightly so, because we we did the Adobe PDF print, and that will create what we call an untagged document. Now that we have an untagged document, and basically what we have is a picture, if you guys can think of that, you know, to help you out cognitively. You just have a picture, and we're going to overlay those form elements on top of it. And that's what that prepare document, prepare form uh, link does. So let's just do that. So I'm going to click on the prepare form option and watch what happens. Okay, we get that same screen we saw earlier, and we're going to select the existing file as before and click the start button as before. And voila. Now, this time, I, I, because I, I, I typed in that field right there, it didn't do that one correctly. But notice all of the other ones, it put it underneath the form element. Okay, under the form labels, rather. Right? And that can save you a boatload of time. Because now, I, the only one I have to fix was this one. That's because I, was, I inadvertently typed into that field in the Word document, so it kept it. And I could correct that uh, as well. Uh, but there's only one that I have to fix, and that was because I wasn't paying attention that I put typed some stuff in. This one would have came in it came in clean as well if I didn't have anything typed in that form element. And then sometimes if you need to Can you change the word document again and save it again? You you could do that, yeah. Yeah, you could do that. Uh in fact, uh, let's just do that. Unless you want to do that. Uh, so let's stop protection. Let me show you that it come in clean if I didn't have this thing in here. And I'm going to just delete it. Um, so watch what happens now. Hit, um, click Save. You want to save it. 
we'll protect it. Um, and then do file, remember, print, and then print to PDF, hit print. Uh, we're going to save, it's going to overwrite, overwrite the existing one, which because they're the same name. And now, if we were to do the same thing, again, click on that prepare form, select the option, click start, voila, life is good. Okay, and so all of them came in clean. Now, what did it do? Why did it do it? I guess more importantly, it's always good to know the why behind things more so than the how to's. Uh, the reason why I put it under the, under the form labels is because it examined a document initially and said, you know, uh, they look like they, you know, I'm, I'm talking like the computer would algorithm. It looks like they are wanting to put the labels underneath that because there's spaces under more elements on that page. So it knows to put it underneath the form element and not on side of the form element. Okay. You do the side and you got you to squeeze it down and push it over. Squeeze it down, push it over. Well, we save a boatload of time. This is, I mean, one page it may not be a big deal. But when you got a five-page document you're trying to fill out, that can save you, believe me, an uh, hour or two of uh, 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 remediation. Okay, believe me. So again, two things you pay attention for. Don't, don't tag your document and clean it up before you convert it. Now, let's look at another thing that we did. Remember we removed the lines between the yes and the no on do you have a felony conviction? And remember previously it read, or it came up as a checkbox when we click on it. Let's see if it came in correctly this time because we removed those lines. So let's see. And let me just zoom in just so you guys can see this better. So if I click on it, indeed, it came in correctly as a radio button. And like this though. Do you uh, minimize the window? Hmm? Hold the window down so we can see. Oh, okay. That window there? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it reminded me because it's different on my computer. Uh, so it came in correctly as, as a radio button and not as a checkbox. So, now I have a little, che a little what I call a little cheat sheet. Um, I think here somewhere. I don't know if I closed it out or not. They close it out. I noticed when, when that window came up and it showed it was a radio button, but the text associated with it was, do you have a felony conviction? I didn't see a yes or a no. So that was yeah, well, yeah, hold off on that. We're going to get to that in a bit. Um, I want to show you what I use in my class when I'm teaching on this. Uh, I use this little acronym here. I call it ADDRESS. Accessibility. This has gone from a word form to a PDF form. This is a little cheat sheet, if you will, that I use. Not well. I say I use. I don't use it because I know what I'm doing. But for for someone's new to this, you know, this can help you out uh, uh, in the process, if you will, because it's a methodic methodical process on how to do it. So first thing we want to do, and again, we we, we talk about all of them. We do them in turn. First thing we want to do is add form elements. That's what we did. We click on the prepare form and add those form elements. That's the first thing we did, right? Then we want to delete the small form element that didn't come in correctly. And they all didn't come in correctly, as we'll see, right? Well, we want to delete those. Delete the small form elements, okay? And then we want to delete the big form elements. So I had to have two Ds, so you could have done them all in one step. <laughs> but I had to get the other D in there, right? <laughs> so we delete the large form element. That's the other D in address. Then we're going to replace those deleted elements with their rightful counterparts, if you will. So we'll replace them. Uh, and then we're going to enhance them. We've got to do a few things to enhance those form elements, as you will see. And then we're going to set those tags on the tag tree. We're going to have what I call kind of hanging on the tag tree, like a Christmas tree. We've got to hang those tags on the tree. Uh, and then we're going to add back some known form elements, like the title and the image logo and stuff like that. We need those, some instructions. We want to hang those back on the tree as well. So we add the form element on the tree, add some non-form elements on the tree, and then we then the last thing we do is save and test for accessibility. And so those are the steps that we're going to be doing in the process. So and I'm going to be highlighting those uh, as I go along, if 
I don't forget because I use it. I've done it so many times. It's, it's second nature to me. <clears throat> but that's the steps in essence that I usually do in a classroom setting. Now, normally, I just do all of this all at one time, right? But classroom, we're doing it uh, systematically so you can see the structure better. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go back to my document that we're working on and and do just those series of steps. So the first thing we did, we added a form element. That was when we clicked on that prepare form, it created those form elements. That was, that was the A in that address, right? So we did that. That's it. Let me laugh and you can click on a button. I mean, you, think you can do that, okay? Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing we want to do is delete small elements. Well, let's go down again. I'm going to start from the top to the bottom, and we're going to delete all the small elements that doesn't that didn't come in correctly. So first of all, let's click on do you have a felony conviction? If I click on it, radio button, is that supposed to be a radio button? Yes. So it's okay. So we don't need to delete those small, small form elements, right? Uh, let's scroll down. Uh, publish uh, information. Let's see. That's a yes or no. That should be what? Radio. radio. Let's see what it came in. Came in radio. Good. Now, it didn't give you the right Two tip, but we'll resolve that in the E in the address. <clears throat> okay. Right. Right here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you may have to remind me because uh, it off the fold of. But see, it, see it right here. In, in, the panel title. in the panel title, correct. Okay. They'll let you know what type of component right. that you are putting on that page. And the tool tip. The tool tip is right here. The tool tip is what is being what gets read by the screen reader. And that's why it's important. It's undefined. We'll resolve that in a bit. But the tool tip is what gets read by a screen reader, like JAWS, or NVDA, or any other screen reader. <clears throat> and we'll we'll address that in the E portion of our our uh, acronym. <clears throat> so close that out. And then we'll move down to gender. Let's see. That should be a radio button or checkbox. Ready? Okay, so let's double check. Uh, it came in as a checkbox, so we need to delete them. And you could, you know, you could select both of them at one time, just lasso it, like you do in most programs, and then hit the delete key. Okay, let's scroll down a little bit further. Auditory status, should that be a radio button or checkbox? So you're just deleting the input for now? Yeah, I'm deleting the input. Because everything else is a basically a picture. The text behind that is basically a picture. Okay, so I'm, I'm deleting the small elements right now. So auditory status, I got deaf, hard of hearing, or hearing. Radio button or check boxes? Radio, because it's one or the other, mutually exclusive for you geeks, right? Uh, and so if I click on it, check box, it came in wrong, right? So I'm going to need to delete it. So I'm going to swipe across it to select it, what we call lasso. And then hit delete. Why does it seem to arbitrarily come in right or wrong? Is there any there's no, no, there's no rhyme or reason. It just, just yeah, delete. yeah. There are some things that you can do, like you like, like you saw me do earlier with removing the lines mm -hmm. that are help that are force it to, to come in right. And now I actually did this one time, but uh, I literally went to the word document and cleaned it up really good, and it came in almost 99 percent clean. Now, the problem with that is if I was to do that, there would be no need for this class, <laughs> okay? Because <laughs> I could just click one button and everything would be good. We don't want to do that because that's not real world, right? But there's no rhyme or reason uh, why it comes in sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, you, you, yeah, I wish you could just swap it out. Yeah, maybe in the next version. That that's probably one of the biggest requests I would suspect, because uh, it's a pain to have to add it back, right? No, right now you got to delete it and then replace it, and that's where the aura comes in, replace in that acronym uh, address acronym. Good question. Okay, so initially, let's see. That should be yes or no. I mean, uh, either one or the other. So. Checkbox did come in correct, so I might indeed have to delete it too. Now, these race select all that apply. Well, we know, and I accidentally deleted uh, too many. 
Okay. Uh, race, select all that apply. What should that, that? That's a dead giveaway, we call it, right? What are these? Should What, what should these be? Check boxes, because check all emphasis there that apply, right? So you know you could do more than one, right? So obviously that would have to be a check box. So if I click on it, there are check boxes indeed, right? So we know that's good. Now, come down at the bottom here. Uh, we have these three three types of payments, right? Depending upon when you pay. Renewal uh, fee of paid before the expiration, one to 90 days after, or 91 to 364 days after expiration, you're gonna pay, you know, a late fee if you register late as it were, right? What what should they be? Radio. Huh? Radio. Radio, because you don't wanna be paying three times, right? Or two times, <laughs> right? You only wanna pay once, right? At least I do. Um, uh, so it should be a radio. So they didn't come in correctly because these are check boxes that show up there at top. So again, we have to delete those. So I'm gonna just swipe across those and hit delete. Okay. Now again, this may seem tedious, but I'm doing a lot of talking. Literally, if I had to do this, I could do this in five minutes. What takes me two hours to talk about? Okay. So, so it may seem tedious, but once you you get a hang of this, you can literally rock and roll technical term uh, and do this without much fuss. Okay, so we did the A, right? We had the form element. We did D, deleted the small form element. Let's do the other D, which is delete the large form element. Again, I'm going to start from the top, work my way down systematically. So we start at the top, and this came in up at the top here, which I don't need, so I'm going to hit delete. The little sliver of text field that was up at the top there. I need obviously these, right? And I need that one because that's the response to if you, if yes, uh, what is the conviction date? So I need that one. I need that, 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 that. And then I'm kind of talking out loud as, as, as What's a word. The difference between the small elements and big elements? Just the size. <laughs> yeah, just the size. And I, and I did that purposely because I was trying to fit it in an acronym address. But it's no different. And I don't mean why they need to get deleted if you don't need it. <clears throat> that, that's a text field. Yeah, see right here? And I don't need that. So that, it, just, it, it thought that was a space to put a text field, right? And so it gave me that. And obviously, I don't need that. So I'm going to select, close that, hit delete. And do I need this one? I don't need this one because I'm, I'm only using this right here. So I don't need this one. Hit delete. Come down here, maintenance method. I don't need that. I was, again, space, so I thought that was a text field, so I'm going to hit delete. And right here, I'm not going to be needing this because I'm going to actually be using these three, right? So I'm going to click on this and hit delete. So bam. Okay, again, I'm spending a whole lot of time on what, if I wasn't talking, I could have done in, in less than a couple of seconds. Okay, so I got rid of all of the small ones. I got rid of all the large ones. D, D. Okay, the next thing on the act on my little cheat sheet right here is to replace. So we want to replace those elements that we deleted. And I, I wish we could swap them out. Now, I, now in Adobe Lifecycle, you can do that. Okay, just let you know, which is good. So if you use Adobe Lifecycle, but not many people use Adobe. I, I, I prefer the Adobe Lifecycle actually over Adobe Acrobat when creating forms. The problem is not many people use it, but it's a really cool program. Uh, but Adobe Lifecycle. Life yeah, and it's, it, it, you can create dynamic and static forms easily. Accessible? Accessible, yeah. Uh, you can create them all the time. I hadn't created them in a while, but. Say it again? I don't know. You, you know, Adobe, uh, they hadn't upgraded it in a while. And, and, and again, not many people use it, so they may not be. Uh, like I said, they might not be updating it because of everybody uses Adobe Acrobat. Is this form a static form? This is a static form, yes. Okay. Dynamic form would be what? Like that, what? Good question. Dynamic form would be a form that if you want to do calculation, you want to add numbers together, right? Or you want things to show up. You click a checkbox, things show up or hide, right? Those are dynamic forms, okay? Or the form expands based upon the amount of text you put into it. That's what Static form is always one page. It can always be one page, right? But a dynamic form, I can literally 
make it where it scales to two or three pages based upon the amount of text I inserted inside of it. <clears throat> okay, so we got the, 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 the uh, large elements, form elements, if you will, deleted. So now let's go up and do the replace. So again, I'm start from the top, work my way down. Uh, and so I got all of these, again, we're going to enhance them here in a bit, but I need to go right here, and I forgot to delete this one, this right here, but that's okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, show you how to do this, I'm going to right click, or control click on the Mac, for you Mac folks, uh, and then I'm going to select what? Radio button, right? So I'm going to click on it, and I get this look. I don't know if you guys can see the crosshair. It's kind of faint on that monitor, but I get a little crosshair with a little with a radio button on it. And I'm going to overlay. See, I'm kind of overlaying it over on top of that box. It just happens to match the size of that box. Now, you can resize it if you need to. But in this case, it just happens to match the size of that box. I'm going to click right on top of it, and it's going to pin it down right over that box. Okay, you guys see that? And then I'm going to get this other dialog box you guys see. And I'm going to type in the choice for gender. In this case, it's going to be what? Male. Okay. And on the group is the name of the radio group. Now, you can have multiple radio groups on a page, but they all need to have different names for their groups, right? So in this case, I usually give the name to whatever the name is adjacent to the box. In this case, it's gender, so I'm going to call this gender group. And I delete that one. Okay, now I could get out of this and do that again, or I could click on this add another button option or link at the bottom, and it's going to open that dialog that option again, giving another uh, radio button. I'm going to overlay that one on top of the next box, and this choice is going to be what? Help me out. Female, right? And notice that remember the previous group, which was gender group, gender group, uh, and then I can click away to commit. So when I click outside that yellow dialog box, it commits that change. So I've added a radio button for male and female. Is it going to be hard to delete the enter X to select one? No, you could do, you can, if you got, depend upon what version, good question, depend upon what version of uh, Acrobat you have, uh, I think it's, Version 11 and above allows you to make minor changes. And remind me in the end to do that because I, I saw that. I know I like to be able to clean that up. Uh, so if, if you remind me in the end, I'll show you how to do that. Normally, but, you would have the word yeah, and normally, yeah, I just forgot to do it in the Word document, right? But normally, in fact, in the Word document, I should have got, gotten rid of that whole line because there's, there's no need for it. And that way, I wouldn't have had to worry about the text field coming in there. What right. I'm wondering is, after you've edited five pages and you notice something you should have fixed in the Word document, then... Yeah, yeah, yeah that's why uh, five minutes of planning saves ten minutes of execution, they say in the industry, right? So plan, plan to work and then work the plan, if you will. So, yeah, spend 80% of your time getting that, that Word document clean. Because the cleaner you get it, and I could literally clean that Word document, and, and it come in 99%, I've done that before, but if I do it again, I wouldn't... I would spend five minutes in this class and not two hours, okay? Uh, but you can clean the document up where it comes in as clean, uh, uh, as clean as possible. That comprehensive mitigation prevents excessive. You're going to always have to remediate, but you want to avoid the excessive remediation. This is okay because it's real world. So. Yeah, and, and it is, right, and that's why I do it because this is a real world example. Okay, so. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I don't want I don't want to mud up the water right now with that. Yeah, you can do that. You can. You can indeed. Okay, um, and that's why I told her, let's let's do that at the end if time permits. <clears throat> okay, so we got we got uh, that one set up. Let's do this one. Okay, I'm gonna right click and then do radio button again. I'm gonna click over here. And this time the choice is going to be deaf, right? And the radio group, remember, it remembers the previous one that you created, so it's still stuck on gender. And we want to make this auditory. And so I'm going to just 
highlight this. And then uh, I'm going to click the Add button. And again, it's going to remember that previous group name. You see right there? And I'm going to change this one to what? Hard of Hearing. And I'm going to click the Add Another button. I'm going to change this to what? Hearing. Hearing. You guys are so smart. Hearing, right? You guys tracking? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'm going to click Away. Once you finish, and then you click Away to commit or to close out that dialog box. So I click to do that. And likewise, I'm going to do this one, initiative. So I'm going to right click and do radio button again. And I'm going to overlay that. And I'm going to type in Hispanic or Latino. Now, because I know it's almost the same as that, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to copy this, right? I'm going to right click and copy it like you do in most programs. Uh, and so now when I click on the add another button, oh, I forgot the group, huh? Let me redo that again. Oh. What I did, I went into preview mode. <laughs> Go back to edit mode. Okay, let me, um, where was that right there? Let me, let me do that again. Uh, so let me do that again. So I, I forgot to change my radio group out of haste. Uh, so radio group, let's do that again. Is that, is there a plus for, for radio and radio, uh, are there two choices for that? Um, I typically use a radio group. I think you can have a single radio. Uh, oh, okay. So, uh, history, Hispanic or Latino, you know, okay, kind of hard to type in the dark. Okay, so I'm going to copy this, right? Now, what I forgot to do before was to change this, right? So, T-H-N-I-C-I-T-Y. It doesn't matter what you call it. I could call it E-group. It doesn't matter as long as you give the, each of them the same name, right? <clears throat> uh, so, I got that, but what I wanted to, I think, did I copy it already? So, I copy it, I think. Okay, I'm going to add another button. So, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to type in not, and I'm going to paste it. Control V. Now again, you could type it again, but I would just this this comes in handy when you have a lot of radio buttons with the same almost the same name, right? Life is easy. And just cut paste and update. CPU is what we call it. Okay, so I'm gonna commit that. Click outside to commit. Now the, the erase, they all came in good, but what I want to do is well, I do that on an enhancement. Um, we got one more to do on the radio button group. And that's down at the bottom here. Now, this one is a combination of different things, if you will. Uh, we're going to use the Mason, well, Mason method is going to be the tool tip that's going to be used later on. But in this case, we're going to use that information you see there along with the word for, uh, enclosed rather, this much uh, amount, right? So we're going to say uh, renew, what is it? Renew fee, renew fee if paid before the expiration date and close $35. So like you said, we kind of use everything we need to, to pin all that together. Uh, so I'm going to right click on this, select radio button again, click it, like so. And then uh, I'm going to type in renew fee if paid. Now I'm, I'm going to put this in the memory. In a buffer, if you will, because I know it's the same as for all three of them, right? Uh, so I'm gonna, and I'm gonna put a space after that. So I'm gonna copy this. It's gonna save me a little typing, and for me, that comes in handy because I, I make a lot of typographical errors. Uh, before the expiration date, before the expiration date, enclose thirty-five dollars, right? And don't. Don't forget to change the group name. In this case, we're just calling, and again, I'm going to cheat just for the sake of time. We'll call it MM, maintenance method. Okay, I, as long as it's the same, you, I call it Cornelius group. Be a little confused, but uh, <laughs> I can call it whatever I want. Okay, so we'll click on the next one. And again, same, same group name, but this time I'm going to paste, because I had that in memory. And this one is paid 
one to 90 days after the expiration date enclosed what is that fifty two dollars and fifty cents they should just round it off but they didn't okay and then I'm gonna click on that another button and by the way I'm gonna purposely uh, not have these lined up to show you how to line them up if you want to uh, for you perfectionists out there oh. that one did not come in correctly I got inadvertently closed it before I committed it. Um, and I don't want to confuse you with the uh, with the other dialog box. So I'm going to do this again. Um, paid. Say renew fee if paid one to 90 days. Before expiration date, and then I'm gonna hit the. Now I could have done it the other way, but I, I didn't want to confuse you guys with the. Um, then this is what. And actually, it was before the. I can change that later though. Paid one to ninety days. I think I did this twice, didn't I? Yeah. Sometimes I, I will keep the Word document around and you can just cut and paste yeah. the Word document more quickly than typing. In yeah, the yeah, because this is, yeah, this is a real pain to do. And I think I need to go and correct the other ones. I think I inadvertently typed in the wrong statement. but And then this should be enclosed $52. And, and one other thing I don't like about these dialog boxes, they're so small and you got to kind of scoot things over and stuff. Uh, what I call a two-pound of bologna in a one-pound bag. Um, I like that. Okay, then we'll click Add again. And ninety-one days to three sixty-five. Days after the uh, 364. Yeah. Okay. Well, I ain't worried about it. After expiration <laughs> date, enclose seventy dollars. Okay. And you can go and change this anytime. Uh, so and then I'm gonna click to commit. So bam. So we got all of the form elements in place. They did not enhance yet. We're going to do that with the E, right? So we add form elements. That's A. Delete the small one. Delete the large one. Re replace them. That's the aura. Then the E is to enhance because we got to make it accessible. They're not. A lot of them are not accessible. Uh, and we'll talk about that. So again, we will start from the top and work our way down. Now again, when you become proficient at this, you're going to do everything top to bottom in one pass. In the class, I'm doing it in A. You know. Five different passes, right? But when you become proficient at this, you're gonna do it all at one time. And, and what taking me again two hours to do, you're gonna do it literally about 15 minutes. I can literally do this in 15 minutes uh, without talking. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna go back to the top yet again, and now I'm gonna enhance the form elements. Okay, so let's talk about what we need to do with the various types of form elements that we need to enhance. For text element, these are the things you want to pay attention to. So let's click on one of them. To show you, uh, with text form element, you got all these tabs to contend with, right? Well, there's only a few tabs that you want to worry yourself about or concern yourself about. And the first one is, huh? Could you pull it down, please? Yes, thank you, thank you, because you need to see these. Okay, so when you click on a text field, you're going to get a boatload, technical term, of tabs to 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 uh, that you can click on, right? You got general appearance, position op uh, options. Action format, validation, and calculation. And by the way, you can make a, a PDF form dynamic with the uh, with that calculate field. If you want to create a dynamic PDF form, I've done that before too. Okay. Uh, so the most important thing in in the general tab is the tooltip. 
because that is what JAWS, that's a screen reader, will read. Okay, and it's typically should read, not always, but typically should read what is on the face of the form. Okay, you want to pay attention to the two tips because the two tips is what JAWS will read. Sometimes you want to deviate from it, but most of the time you want to match what's on the face of the form. Okay, so in this case, we want this thing to say, you know, certificate holder name. That's what it says. It, it, it did that automatically for us when it, when it rendered it, right, and created it. Now, under appearance, you know, I have nothing. Under appearance, you got the font size and the font type, right? You don't want to use the word auto. Auto, short for automatic. Uh, you don't want to use that. Okay, let me, let me show you why. I'm gonna, now I don't want you guys to do this, but I'm gonna click. I'm gonna click uh, close, and I'm gonna go into what we call a preview mode, so you can see what the form looks like as if though someone was filling it out. <clears throat> this is a preview mode. And you guys probably familiar with something like this, I'm sure, right? <clears throat> now watch what happens when I start typing in that field. It's fine, right? As long as I stay within the confines of that text field. But as soon as I start typing more the font gets smaller. And what I call, again, putting that two-pounder balloon in a one-pound bag, right? It will literally squeeze the text <laughs> to fit inside of that box. Not exactly what you want to do, okay? So unless you've got a compelling reason to do that, right, you don't want to be using the word auto for your font, okay? You want to specify exact or fixed font size, fixed font size, if you will. So let's go back into my edit mode. But yeah, <laughs> too fond of baloney, right? <clears throat> so what you want to do is, now, by the way, when you do start typing, you're going to edit mode and start typing. You're going to clear these form elements. Otherwise, you're going to get errors when you when you check for accessibility. So you can always want to go over here and click on the. See right here, I got text in there that I added in there. I don't want that because that's going to cause all kind of errors if I don't clear it out. So I'm going to go over to this, this menu right here, the menu option. Click on it. Can you guys see it? Is it showing it? Is it showing it? Okay. It's the more menu? Yeah. Yeah, you see it right here? Okay. Click on that. And then the clear, clear form. And when you clear it, notice it disappears. Okay. You always want to do that. Believe me. Trust me. You're going to always want to do that because otherwise it's going to cause you all kind of headaches. You guys don't like headaches, I know. I don't, particularly those migraine ones, right? <clears throat> if you don't clear that. Oh, with the button on the more. Oh, uh, it's clear form, right here. Okay. Okay. You can always want if you, you go in and kind of do a little test while you're working on it. Make sure you clear that before you make that document accessible. So let me. Okay. So now we're back here. Uh, and let me see what else we got to contend with. So typically, I change this to 12. That's the minimum, right? Uh, font size that 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 we use 12. You can do 14. You know, again, it depends typically what the size of the font on the face of the form. All those apps there, right? <clears throat> uh, but 12 is a good number, okay? That you want to include. And that way, it doesn't it doesn't squeeze itself. Uh, get smaller if you add more text. <clears throat> now again, if you know if you know the text is not that big, you don't have to really worry about this because it's not going to have to exceed that limit, right? So, but if if, if there's any propensity that bent tendency or habit of of doing that, then you may want to do a fixed font. I always do fixed font, and we'll show you how to do this with all of them, all in a flash, as it were. Okay, and. Under the option, so this is the third tab that you want to work on when dealing with form fields. You want to turn off the check spelling and the scroll long text. Now, why you say why, why do you want to turn off check spelling? Well, because typically when you're doing forms, you typically do people names, right? And how many of you know? A lot of you guys have unique names, and a spell check is not going to check your name, <laughs> right? Like Cornelius, they not recognize Cornelius. Definitely don't recognize Chopin, right? Chopin, you know? Uh, you're not going to recognize that. So you don't want spell check and typically turn on form element because you don't want those little squiggly red lines like you see in Word, right? 
uh, show up in your form fields. Uh, so we typically turn that off. So we turn all the options off under the option tab. So the general tab, the parent tab, and the option tab are the three tabs that you want to tab to uh, when dealing with text fields. So I'm going to click and close that. And then I could go here and do that again and turn this one off. I can come to appearance, change it to 12, and change this to, uh, okay, that's saying birth, that's fine. And then I can go to the next one and go to appearance, change that to 12, and then go to option and turn those off. Now, the problem with that, again, is one by one, <laughs> not much fun. So let's show you how to do, do this without having to do them one at a time. Um, I'm not sure why, but we we usually just check turn that option off. Okay. Yeah, we just turn that option off. I'm not exactly sure. Now, when now if you're doing a multi-line, there's an option for multi-line. You make you want to make sure that option is selected. Let me just show you that what I'm talking about. Uh, under the option panel right here, you see multi-line. Mm -hmm. So if, right now, each of the text fields and, and typically most text fields are single line, but you have what they call a text area. Right. A text box or an area. Right. A text area. Uh, multi-line. You want to make sure that multi-line option is indeed checked. That's the only exception to that rule. But normally, we turn all of those off. Okay. So I'm gonna turn. Since all of them one single line, I just turn all of them all, all of them off. Okay. So now, what I did on that first row, I did them one by one. Now again, that could be real tedious. So this is what you can do. Instead of doing one by one, you can select. Similar, or the same, I should say, not similar, but the same form elements all at one time. Again, lasso around them, and you can select all of them all at once without having to do one at a time. The advantage of this is that when I change the property, it's going to change the property for all, emphasis there, all of those form elements all at one time. So I'm doing it one time and not six times or whatever. What was that? Well, you do control A, it is going to select everything on the page, right? Because yeah, control A. Yeah, yeah. Control A, as in most programs, will select everything on the page, whether it's a 3D document, a Word document. Yeah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> See, if I do control A, it's going to select everything. Okay, you don't want to do that. And, and, you, and if you try to do that, uh, it's going to give you, the thing going to be damned out. Because they 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 not like elements. The elements are not alike. That's right. We can't do this oh, sorry. So you get the elements get stemmed out because uh, you, the elements have to be the same in order for this to work. So let me cancel out of that. Did you lasso line by line, or did you lasso? Oh, what I did? No, I I just lasso. Now I can't go down this far because see you got those radio buttons down there, right? So if I do that, I'm gonna run into a problem. So I'm lassoing these, but I can also hold on the shift key and add, not, well, not shift key, the uh, control key, excuse me, and I can add to the list. So I can literally do all of the text all at one time. So you have to handpick all of the elements of a particular term. Right? Yeah, right, elements. exactly, exactly. And you can hold on the control key, like in most programs, to select non-contiguous, that's a big word, elements. So when you... <laughs> When you lasso the elements, it's not going to select the form labels? No, because I didn't lasso over that form. Uh, when you say, you say form label, you're talking about the radio? No, I mean like the words address, city, state. Yeah, remember, that's a picture. That's, that, that's, oh, okay. that, that, that never gets selected. That so is the, literally a picture behind there. Because when she said select um, control A. It's going to select all those form elements. Okay, so you only want certain groups that right. are similar. That, that are the same. Not similar, but that are the same. Oh. Same text, all text field, all radio button, all check boxes, right? Not similar, but the same. Because radio button checkbox is similar, right? But they're not the same. That's because you're in the form editing part portion, is that mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. And so select, select only the element. In this case, I'm going to kind of kill, you know, all of them at one time because we're running out of time here. 
So I got all of my text fields selected. Right now, when I right click and do properties, and I select appearance. Now, by the way, general is going to show. Is not going to show name and tooltip because name and tooltip differ from each one of them. Right, so it's not going to show anything for the for the, for the general, but for my appearance, I want to make sure I set that to 12, and I make sure I set my options, turn all my option off. Now, when I click close, and I always inspect what I expect, Ross Perot, um, I um, if I click on these, I get those properties set for all of them. You guys see that? No. So, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so used to looking at the screen. I'm not looking up this way, right? But it's going to set those properties the same 12 and no option selected on the option panel, right? You click on the option panel and I click on any one of these and it saved me a boatload of time by not having to do them individually. Life is good. <clears throat> okay, so we got that. So we did the text field. Now let's go down and do radio buttons or the check boxes. So now that we have that, because I'm see we kind of coming up on the clock here. Uh, so now let's check our radio uh, radio buttons. Double click on it. Okay, it's going to read. Do you have a felony conviction? Now, by the way, you don't. The name doesn't matter. You can call this whatever you want, but it typically matches what. Uh, but you can type this to be whatever you want. But if it renders it, it's going to render it with the same name as the two tip. Uh, for the radio button, uh, what you want to concern yourself with is the make sure. Now again, we use the check option. Again, you, again, this is a preference, but the button style is a check, so it shows a check instead of a, little, a circle or a dot. Okay, and then notice the, the the response to the choice is yes for yes. But if I click on no. It changes to no. Now again, I want to change this to check. Okay. And so those are the things that you want to concern yourself with the radio button is the name or the tooltip and the option. I always check that and then check my button style to be checked. Okay. Now again, it depends upon your agency or whatever, that might differ, but we typically always use the check option. Yeah. And so that's what we typically do, okay? And so you don't do what else is there besides that? Oh, there, there's a whole slew. There's circle, cross, diamonds. I don't know why you would want to use a diamond. Uh, so anyway, there's different options, style that you can use. Okay. We always use we always use the check option. Circle would, would probably it's okay to use circle for the radio button, but the problem is my Word document has squares, so I don't want to have a, square, a circle and a square. That's not going to look good. It's going to look cheesy, we call it, right? So we keep it as a square, <laughs> so we could just put a check in it. <clears throat> but if you have a circle, it's probably good to put a circle, because you want to put a round peg in a square hole, as they say, right? <clears throat> okay, so close that out. Okay, so let's check uh, this one, which is what? Uh, now, this one didn't come in clean. Uh, so this one should say uh, publish. I'm gonna just call it publish, and then I'm gonna change the tooltip to read what's what's here. Publish. Information in. Well stated. I couldn't have said it even better. I'll give you five brownies for that. Virtual brownies. <laughs> Calorie spring. <laughs> well stated. Exactly what it is. Okay, so you could think of the two tips as alt text for text. I like that. Can I use that? Absolutely. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so anyway, I got that one with 
with yes. Now notice it's yes too, so I want to just say yes. And the reason why I say yes too, because there was a previous yes. And so the name of yes underscore two, which is not what we want. And I'm gonna put that as a check as well. Then I'm gonna click on no. By the way, you don't need to close the dialog box every time you do something. You can keep as modal or non mode. I always forget which one it is. But you can edit any one of them at any given time without having to close it. So I'm gonna click on no. And you see, I get a no to, no to. So I'm gonna delete that dash underscore two. And again, I'll make that a check. And and this was, what did I call this one? Publish. Why did you make a no button instead? Hmm? Why did you make a no button? Hold on just a second. So now notice when I type the word name in there, watch what happens when I tap to the two tip. Bam. It automatically put the two tip in it because the radio button, it knows that they have the same two tip. So that can save you some time too. Hmm. What was your question again? Oh, yeah. Uh, so you make a no. Right here. I did a no right here. It was no underscore two. Okay. That's what Adobe had written it as. Oops. I'm sorry, you guys. I keep forgetting. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. So it was no underscore two. Uh, that's what it came in as, but I cleaned it up and made it N O because that's the correct word. <clears throat> Oh, so if you put no underscore two, is that how it's going to show up? Yeah, that's how it's going to show up. But you don't want it. That's the choice that someone. So the screen reader is going to say no underscore two, which is not what you wanted to read. You want to say no or yes. There's a choice for that radio button. <clears throat> okay. So let's go down to here and then see what we got. Uh, mail circle. Let's do a check. And. To tip, I'm gonna say gender, okay, and then we'll come over here and make sure that's female. Check that. Then I'm gonna scroll down, and again, now again, what I could do, like like what we did earlier, right? Select multiple ones, save myself some time on the check thing. Uh, now the choice is going to be different though, so it's not, they're not going to show up unless you do them individually. So I always like to do them individually because I want to be able to see if I got the right stuff in it and indeed I do, right? And then a two tip, <clears throat> now watch, if I click on that, there's no two tip for neither one, neither, uh, either, of, either of the three, right? But if I add a two tip, again auditory status, And if you want to, you know, some people like to put the phrases as a question, right? What is your auditory status or, or something like that? Again, that's a preference. We usually like to match what's on the face of the form because there may be cases where someone calling in and saying, and you saying one thing and it's not on the form and say, I don't see that, you know, as a blind user. So it's always good to try to match what's on the face of the form unless there's a compelling reason to do otherwise. <clears throat> so watch, now that I've created on one, if I tap to the other one, they automatically get added because the radio button has the same name. The radio group has the same name. By the way, this is the radio group name. Remember when we added radio group, right? So if you have a radio group name, the two tips gonna automatically cascade, I guess a good term to use, into the other fields or I click on one of them. So life is easy. Okay, one more to do, uh, and that's down here. And I'm gonna just say, uh, and just for the sake of time, I'm going to just say uh, maintenance method, All right? <clears throat> and again, I'm going to check and check. And I'm also check my, um, my information. And again, I could go in here. The only thing I don't like about this, again, is I got to kind of scroll left and right to get into that little two-pound bologna, one-pound bag. Because I know I made a mistake on the first one, but again, I'm not going to worry about correcting it. You guys get the drift, though. Uh, but you can go in that little box, and you see I'm scrolling it in that little window. <laughs> you can go in and, and you know find out where you need to change and update it. Uh, what I wanted to do, though, is to show you that if you select these, uh, I purposely didn't line these up to show you that you can, like most image editing programs, you graphics folks, you can appreciate this. <clears throat> you can just click on the align tool, and it's going to align them, right? So if you want to, you know, for you perfectionists in the house, you want to line the buttons up, you can do that. 
Or you could distribute them equally. Y'all like to do that too, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> you graph its votes. Yeah, well, I know. Well, these buttons was out of line, oh, okay. and so I clicked right here oh, to I align, exactly. right? Or I could distribute them equally, right. right? Just like you do in Illustrator, Photoshop, and many other programs. <clears throat> you can't see the very top of the screen up there. What is it? What area are you in? Like, what tool are you using? Is that the Forms tool? Uh, that is part of this. Uh, Oh, yeah, oh, it just kind of oh, shows up. Say. Yes, yeah, it just okay. shows up under the preview. Okay. Yeah, yeah under yeah, kind of under prepare form category. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay. So let's see. We run out of time. So we did the A, the A, the A, the D, the D, the E, the E for um, mm -hmm. enhance, then replace. No, the enhancement was where we make it make it accessible, where we, you know, went in and made sure the radio buttons were right and the labels was right and the two tips. That's the enhancement enhancement part. Okay. So now what we want to do is to set the tags on the tree. Okay. Now before I do that, what I normally like to do is uh, scroll on here and show you this. Uh, I do a, a sanity check, if you will. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but over to the side here, can you guys see over here where I'm clicking? Mm -hmm. I usually just use my tab key. Yeah, let me see. Did that work? No. no. Well, I, I thought I could grab one of these. Mm. I can't open it up. Um, Might be able to grab Oh, here we go, yeah. Okay, that's about the best I can do. Okay, so what I do is I usually use the down arrow and let's go down and, 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 and make sure my reading order is correct. And it should be reading in order that I wanted to go. And I think it is. You see how it's highlighting the elements on the page? Okay. And then when you get to a radio button, like here, you want to use, you want to go left. Let me do it right here. Let me see if I can scroll this up a little bit so you can see it better. So I'm on the radio button. If I use my <clears throat> right arrow to open it, I'm going to see yes, no. And that gives me an opportunity to check to see if I did yes, no. Sometimes I forget to put that, I forget to take that underscore one or two off. It helps me to. <clears throat> so I'll go down the page and check two things, the spelling and the reading order from this panel. <clears throat> okay, and again, when you get to a radio button, you want to use the left arrow or the right arrow rather, and then check inside of it. So I'm I'm checking them right here. Once I do that, now I want to hang, hang them on the tag on the tag tree. <clears throat> so let's do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we are currently in the form editing mode, right? We need to get into the regular mode. Or what kind of almost the mode that we work when we're working in documents, right? PDF documents. We want to get into the form editing mode. So right now you see we're in the preview, right? Well. Can you? Okay. Yeah. Can y'all see that now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I see this prep, the form preparation, and then if you preview it, I also like to do a pre, a quick preview. I kind of type things in uh, to see if my uh, words are correct, and make sure I had these correct, and make sure that they, you know radio and not check boxes but anytime you do that always remember again to clear the fields before you start doing anything else so clear form rather before you do anything else okay so i'm gonna get out of this mode i'm clicking the x box right here you guys see it is it showing yes okay i'm gonna click on it Just a second here. Let me get out of this mode first. Okay. 
So I'm getting, I'm, I, get, I exit out of that mode. I'm going back to my tag tree. Remember that? Now, again, there's no tags on it because it came in untagged, remember. So what we want to do is add the tag back to the tree. And again, I'm talking fast because I see we have, what time we have, the 3.30? Where are we at? Yeah, 3.30. Three, okay, so, okay, so I'm going to right click and do add tags to document. Now, normally in a, in a document, in a regular document, if it doesn't come in correctly or it comes in corrupt or whatever, I blow away the tags and then I re-tag it. That, that helps if you need to do that in a regular document. Here I'm going to retag the document. So when I click on it, it gives me this report, which is not what I need. I'm going to click on that tag tree again, and now I see the tag tree again. <clears throat> and this time, it shows there's a, it selected, it wrapped everything in the in image tag, a figure tag, right? Not what I want to do. Then inside of that figure tag, I have all my form elements. Well, I'm going to control click or shift click this time because I want to select all of my form element. I'm going to push it out of that tag up to the top. And then I want to delete. Now, again, this, this is going to vary depending upon the document. So it's not going to always be the same like you see here, depending upon the document. <clears throat> I'm going to delete this artifact. Anytime you see the shoe box, you always, emphasis there, you always want to uh, convert that to artifact. Don't delete it because it's going to cause you all kind of headaches, I'm telling you. So never delete the little shoe box. Okay, a Christmas present. I've heard all kind of names being given uh, to it. Do not delete it. Always convert that to an to artifact. So you right click or control click and select change tag to artifact and then click OK. Don't worry about what the options are. I don't know. I just click the OK button all the time. <laughs> so click the OK button and it disappears. And then you can delete the tag. And you know a tag is empty when there's no plus or minus at the time minus adjacent to it. So I'm going to delete that tag. Now I'm going to go back up to the top and what I like to do is put all of my form tags that are in one section all in one form tag. Now you don't have to do this, it's optional, uh, but I like to put all my form tags in that first section which is uh, what? Call, you'll see the reason for that in a minute. Specific whole information, all those are going to be in that one. And then I'm put another, create another form tag and put it in contact information. And another one in the statistical uh, information. So let's see what we have. We got that one, that. And you guys see it being highlighted as I click here, being highlighted on the document, right? You guys see that? Now, when I get to this one, though, you see these two? I want these two to be up in this form, form tag. So I'm going to shift click. To select both of them and then we'll drag it. Make sure you drag it correctly. Make it make sure you nest it correctly. Otherwise, it can mess you up. And it's hard to redeem yourself. So it's always good, by the way, to save and save often too. And save to have different versions, which is what I do quite often. Uh, I'm gonna delete that that empty tag now, that form tag. Now let's see, is that I got one more in this form tag, I believe. This right here, see, it's all part of that first, what we call these, we call these little black title speed bumps, right? Or what uh, Dan, not Dan, uh, Ronnie's always called them. <laughs> so I'm going to move that one up. Now you can see, if I click on this, close this form tag, you can see everything highlighted in that form tag. You see, I'm going to can you guys see a little box around, it's kind of faint, but the box around that whole, that first section. Then I'm going to go to the next section. And you can see I'm highlighting daytime phone and you're getting highlighted. So I want to select everything in here. Okay, so I'm um, in uh, video and I'm going to click down here and look for those other two, which is that one and that one. Hold on my shift key to select both, drag it up. And I got all of those in that form element. Then let me scroll down a little bit further. <clears throat> Let's see, so let's see, did I get everything in there? Yeah. And then we'll get this one. And I'm going to scroll down. And what well, I forgot to get these. Do you see the little circle? Mm -hmm. I forgot to get those. Those are dead giveaway. <laughs> um, you can go and correct that. Um, so I need to select all of these. And I don't want to push these up here. And then I can delete that tag. 
And then what we have here, that's that multimedia group, and there should be three of them. Now, where all of these come from? Oh, I must uh, inadvertently moved it down, huh? Yeah, that's that top one. Right. So these are the multimedia ones. I'm going to move them into the multimedia group. And then we'll delete that tag. So that's that one. That's that one. Which one is this? Okay, that's that one, I think. And then that's the bottom one. And let's see, what is this one? I don't know what happened, why it did this. Yeah, it got duplicated, huh? Why did it? Well, I guess it got duplicated since, I may have inadvertently duplicated. I don't know how that happened. That's a weird one, first time that happened. Anyway, I'm going to delete that one. I don't know what, what the deal is with that. Okay, and then I got a little paragraph down there. You could keep this if you wanted to, and I don't know if you guys can see it again, the monitor. I got this little P tag, my paragraph. That's that little tag. Those two little items down at the bottom. You can keep that if you, if you want to. Uh, I'm, I'm going to keep it. So anyway, you line it up <clears throat> Excuse me, in the, in, the L, in the reading order that you want. Right Now, you don't have to put them all in separate form elements. I like to do that. Because when I start to add back my non-form element, I know where to put them. So I'm going to add back a few more things and we'll be through uh, uh, with the accessibility. And then we can check for accessibility. So, and hopefully when I deleted the other stuff, didn't cause problems. Hope not. Okay, so now that we have all the form elements in place, let's go in and add non-form elements, if you will. So. We'll go up to the top of the page, and again, tell me, you guys, if y'all can't see stuff. Can y'all see that logo right here? Am I showing it? Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is lasso. I'm going to go into the, uh, just like a regular document, you got to go into what we call accessibility mode uh, and use the reading order in order to select, select stuff. And I'm going to turn this off for clarity's sake. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lasso that image you guys see the last little logo up there and I'm gonna make that an image using click on this option right here uh, which one? right right here it, it just got dimmed out but it created this figure right here figure yeah figure button okay now the figure ha ha happens to be the first thing that should be read right so I'm gonna move it up above the first form element see it right there and then like with most figure images right you want to give it a what an alt text. So I'm gonna right click and do properties and give it a and then and I'm gonna just say what I'm gonna just say DAWs logo. Okay. Now, normally you would spell this out because but, but since I'm against the clock, I'm gonna just abbreviate it. Close it. So I got the figure. Then I want to select a title for my document. And I'm gonna select all three of these lines, right? And that's gonna be akin to my H1 or my heading, if you will, in a regular document. So I'm going to click it, and notice this shows up right there in the wrong place. So I'm going to move it up right below figure because that's what I want to read next. Then I got a little bit of instruction right here. I'm going to select it. This is going to be regular text. So I'm going to hit the text tag, and it creates that text tag down at the bottom here. I'm going to move it right Okay. So figure, what happened to my H1, huh? Okay, yeah, yeah, I've done that before. You got to be careful with that. Uh, no, no, figure should come first. I inadvertently, um, okay, there we go. It's easy to do that, <clears throat> particularly if you're trying to look and talk at the same time and type. <clears throat> okay, then. Uh, you see these, what I call speed bumps, right? I'm going to select it, and they, those are going to be my H2 tags. And the reason why I group them in logical sequence is I can add those easily. So I'm going to select this one, uh, and I'm going to hit H2, and I'm going to select this one, contact information. Can you guys see that? I'm going to hit H2, select this one, 
statistical information, hit H2. Now, they're not in the right place right now, but it's easier for me to see where I can just add them right above the form elements, right? Because like this is the first form elements, set of form elements. So I'm going to move this H2 right above it, right? And then this is the second set of form elements. I'm going to move this H2, contact information, right above it. So you see the importance of why it kind of put the form element in a logical sequence. Uh, and then, uh, what is this? Statistical information. Oh, maintenance mode. I, I, I may have deleted something. Statistical. Yeah. Okay, let's see. How many we have? Oh, I'm missing one. That's what it was. Okay, I didn't get this one on. Thank God. Uh, so I'm going to select. Did I get that one? Uh, yeah, so I was missing one. Okay. So it's a statistical element. That's that. And so I think I need to move him here, and I think him there. Okay, I think I got that right. Okay, but you see I got heading, section, heading, section, heading, section, heading, section. Okay, so once you get all of that, you got the logo, you got your H1, should always have an H1, right? Uh, you got set of instruction, and then I got my heading 2, heading 2, heading 2, between all of my form elements. And that's the reason why I like to group them like that. You don't have to do that. You know, you could just do whatever you want. But form elements are empty tags. They're like div tags, right? They're empty containers, like span tags. Uh, they're empty containers, <clears throat> unless you style them. <clears throat> okay, so now that we have that, that's the S in. Uh, and then the second S is to save and uh, test. <clears throat> so what we want to do now is we've done everything correctly, and I hope we have. <clears throat> There's two ways to run accessibility in a new version of uh, Acrobat. You can use the old school of doing a uh, full check, which I very seldom do anymore, uh, because it doesn't do everything for you. I like to use the accessibility wizard, okay, um, in a new version. And let's see, do I have it on this? Let's see, I don't think so. So. No, that's different. Yeah, now this full check is what what you can use. But and it's going to give you this dialog box right here using the wizard. But it's the last thing in that wizard list, and we'll see that in a minute. I'm gonna cancel out of that for right now. Uh, but under the tools, thank you. Um, Action wizard is what I'm looking for. Okay. And I already have it here. You see the action wizard? Okay. So can you all see that action wizard? Like that? That's what I use. Because what it does, it prompts you for all the information that you need. Right? You know, the, the language, the title, all that fun stuff. So let me show you how it works. So I'm going to click on it. Uh, it'll give you a list of type of action that you can perform. We want to make accessible. Right? Click on it. Uh, it's going to tell you to click the start button and it's going to prompt you with a series of dialog box. First one is the title of your document. You always good to have a good title. You could unclick that, change it, and then click on it again. And then click the OK button. Can you put down the, uh, the dialog box? Um, uh, step, one step yeah, I can't. Uh, yeah, I, I, I got, already got it started, but it was, it's basically just a title. Okay, can y'all see that one though? Okay, then we got the uh, document language. Typically, this is English, but you might have an English-Spanish document, right? Uh, so you want to set that. And again, I always click OK. Uh, man, that's a new one. I think, remember it caused some problems when I was, it had some duplicate. I've never seen this before. That's weird. hope that doesn't cause any problems. I don't know what this is. Okay, I, that, that's a new one on me. I think that's when it inadvertently do, duplicate. Now, this is what you don't want to do. Is you don't want to say yes to detect, detect form fields because you've already created form fields. If you do this, it's going to create form fields on top of form fields. Not a good thing. 
Okay, do not emphasize that. Do not select this option. So you want to say no, check, or skip this uh, step. And then again, in a language setting, you want to say okay. And then it's going to detect whether or not you've added alt text to your images, right? Uh, I think, I, well, I only have one image up there, the, the logo. If I didn't, it would prompt me to add alt text. That's kind of good, too, uh, in the newer version. Uh, and they got something going on right here that shouldn't be there. I'm going to just make this a decorative image, right? I mean, push it in the background. Uh, and I'm going to hit save. And then you get the typical old school dialog box that you normally would get uh, if you got version 10 and below, I believe. Is uh, decorative image the logo? Decorative image was, it was some, auto, some, some stuff they had in the background. Uh, the logo is actually a real figure that we want to we want to give alt text to. It was some noise that I just pushed to the background. <clears throat> then we get this this full uh, full check that you normally get. I'm gonna click start checking, and uh, here we go. We got two errors. Now I say errors. You get two things. You always get this, by the way, because Adobe Acrobat cannot do these two things for you. One. It can't check the read the logical reading order. But when we reviewed that panel and we saw that it was going in the right reading order, life is good. As long as the reading order that you anticipate, you could right click on this and say pass. And it's going to give you a check. And color and contrast. Now, typically, uh, the show panism here, black and white is always right. Okay, so you've got a black text, you got a you got a, a document that is uh, white white with black text, you're not gonna you're not gonna have any problem, I promise you. Okay, so I know I know I'm, I'm not, if there's an issue as far as color, I use a color analyzer too to check the colors, but I know that's not the issue here for me. So I'm gonna right click on this and say pass. And I had one alt text problem. I, I saw some issue uh, pop up. I don't know why. I thought I put up. Did, did I not give it that logo? Uh -huh. I thought I did. Well, let's see. I don't know why I did that. Okay. Let me just skip it for right now. Okay. Uh, I could go back in the document and uh, and add alt text like you saw me do earlier. Now, you had a question. I know I'm running uh, out of time. Does the enter exit select one on the statistical information? Say that again? Speed bump? Under the speed bump that says statistical information, there's an enter exit. Oh right, you want okay, you want to get rid of that's right. Okay, so show you how to do that. So again, let me go back to the accessibility panel because you always want to be in the accessibility panel. Actually, uh, there's another panel you want to get into. I call create, um, not create, edit PDF. Okay, now you only want to do this with minor text. You don't want to be changed, trying to change too much. Okay. But this is helpful for minor text. So if you click on it, you go into the edit mode, and you can literally, where is it? Right here? You see right there? Select that. Hit delete. Bam. Life is good. Okay. And delete it. Oh, you can edit it. Can you delete the row? You could, but you have to gotta it, it's a little bit more difficult to do rows. Because I have to move everything up and that you know I don't have time to do that. <laughs> okay, but I can do that. Because of the picture, but I can still move stuff around. I mean, if you click on this, watch. But I click here and hit delete. See, I could delete stuff, um, and then I would have to kind of grab all of this if I can, and then kind of shove it up, you know, like that. So you can do that. See that? Mm -hmm. I'm in business. Okay. So, but I don't normally do that. You do all that in Word, right? So you don't have to do that in a PDF file. Yeah, well, I probably forgot to select those, right? And again, um, at least you have some multiple undos. Unlike, um, what is that? Doesn't have any undos, Dan. Uh, they, they just added undos. Uh, yeah, that used to be a pain. That with one multi, one one level undo. <clears throat> now they need to go back to the elements that they have a oh yeah, these right here. Okay, so you go back into that edit mode. 
uh, and I did skip these, right? So if I go back into the, what is it, edit PDF? No, excuse me. No, no, no. Uh, prepare a form, right? And which one were they? It's these two right here and these two, right? <clears throat> so, so I can select these two, right click, and do property, and then go to my. Um, it's got one. Uh, okay, I was about to say, what is the deal there? <laughs> and again, you got to have similar, and it's easier to do that too. Um, there we go. And do check, click OK. And I think it was these two too, right? So mm -hmm. right click, property, uh, check, check, preview, and voila. And I'll do it. Right on. And I got five minutes to spare. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I could have done this in 15 minutes if I hadn't talked about it. But um, anyway, that's how you remediate a PDF form. So basically, you're taking it in summary. You're basically taking it, uh, do, do, uh, clean up your Word document. Let me just do, talk about summary. First of all, clean up your Word document. Uh, and there's, there's, a, there's some things that you can do. Let me see if I can find it real quick to help you mitigate your Word document. I got this off the Adobe website years ago called Autofill Detection. Uh, and let me see if I can pull up one of these. And I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, I'm going to put it too big. Where, where did you get to that? I'm sorry, I can't see the top of the screen. Uh, this is a um, this is a fold a file that I have. Uh, but it, it talks about designing for autofill detection. It shows you some things to keep and to avoid. Um, like like right here, if you do this, don't don't do this. Uh, do not place dashes between in lines. All kind of stuff like that can cause problems for you. Uh, uh, if you Google auto detection, yeah. If you Google uh, designing for auto detection, field detection. Uh, yeah, if you Google that, you'll find you'll find it because that's that's what I did. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, clean up your Word document as much as you can because it's going to make your PDF document easier. Remember, my show panism, comprehensive mitigation prevents excessive remediation that avoid arbitration and cost litigation. Okay, and as one of my students said, they vent frustration and discrimination. That's the Dr. Seuss version. You know, Dr. Seuss, cat in the hat? <laughs> I always have to close out with that. <laughs> Any questions? Oh, do you still need to go back and do any of the um, yellow triangle? No, the triangle. I think there's one triangle. Well, actually, that, that was a that was that one. I probably need to go back and correct the that that the uh, that logo uh, and make put alt text on it. That's why it didn't come in right. You added alt text to the outside. Huh? You added alt text. Yeah, I may have added it in the wrong. Yeah. Do you have an art? Are there different fields on that pop-up box? Uh, you want to put it. Yeah, you, you want to put it in the alt text field. Now there are times when sometimes the file doesn't come in correctly. You want you're gonna put it in the alternative. Uh, no, not description. Uh, what's the name of it? You gotta close that out. Let's see. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm in the form editing mode. Uh, I think it's called. Um, get the name of it. Still have a few minutes to change the warning and eliminate it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Hold on. Just a second. Normally, what I do is select it, select this. Right, and, and I don't know why that broke up because this was actually, there we go. And then you hit uh, images, 
a figure, and I should have done that already. Um, and then you want to add alt text to that on the tag tree. So, and I I have it here. I'm, oh, actual text is what. Sometimes it doesn't come in if it the screen reader is not reading it right. You can put it on actual text. Uh, but I got Dodge logo right here. That's where you want to put alt, 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 alternate text. No, no, no. Uh, I mean, sometimes I do that uh, if if I'm having issues. Oh, did you uh, fix it? Uh, I thought I did. Uh, I have to run an accessibility check again, and we'll just do a full check. And then for some reason, yeah, it's gonna take you to the website. Um, that's normally not a problem, but but I think something got I, I did something that corrupted it, and once the names get corrupt, you got to spend a little bit of time uh, uh, fixing it. Normally, text is a, is a minor issue, believe me. Add no text to uh, image, I it should be a piece of text. No, not, not I've edited I've edited stuff after the fact with no problems. That may have been because I lift I lift up all those elements and you know it doesn't take much to corrupt. Again, get your document clean first, right? And then uh, avoid problems. Because uh, I'm telling you, it's, it's hard to to fix stuff. Okay, and then we're out of time. I could go in and find out what the problem is, but it probably take me a good 20 minutes to do that. And we don't have that. We don't have that time. I think sometimes it's not worth the effort either. If you just fire up yeah, the and yeah. listen to it. If it reads it fine, you're good. And that's a that's a good question too. And, and and that wasn't it didn't give me an X, it gave me a warning. So it still probably would read correctly in, in, in JAWS or in DDA. Uh, what do you and we have that issue too where things doesn't come in I mean it might be, you know, flaky in the in the in the, in that panel, but it'll still read right in JAWS. So it's always good to do what we call a sanity check. With JAWS. Where do you get the JAWS? Uh, is it Freedom time? Scientific. Google JAWS. Google JAWS. Freedom Scientific. Uh, it's a how much is it? Thousand yeah, dollars? A pretty expensive program. There's a free version. There's a free uh, yeah. screen reader called NVDA that you can use for PC. Uh, a voice overview iPad user. Uh, what else you got? Talk back if you're an Android user. You can tell me the trial version of JAWS which will only run for 40 minutes at a time before you have to well, reboot. Yeah, but I've heard, I downloaded version 18 and it is, it's not letting me restart it back up. Really? Yeah. You said voiceover for iPad, what was the other one? Uh, talk back for Android. And the DA? Yeah. Yeah. Any question? Final question?